Hi everyone, David Mala here. Today we're going to go over something really cool. We're going to do forecasting, but instead of the regular U.S. stocks and ETFs and stuff like that, we're going to do the Pakistan uh, ETF, P-A-K, to get a more Middle Eastern or uh, you know other side of the world uh, idea on monies. And the thing is, these ETFs are exchange traded funds. They're diversified in the most part, not all of them, but this one is. And I'll show you the holdings down below, but in a second. So it's going for $23.50 right now as of Friday. So we want to know where is it going to go. Now you could quickly look at the graph on it and say, okay, here's the day, here's the year. You know, it's always on a low end for the year. Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Where's it going to go? So we're going to look at this from a data science lens or perspective. And if I take this down here, I can actually see the top holdings. This is Yahoo Finance, by the way. But I can see uh, the holdings of uh, oil and gas, banks, petroleum, uh, cement, uh, you know, more banks. So it's it's pretty diversified over a wide range of different sectors, which is good to have. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go out to our studio, and we're going to look at this from a data science lens. Where is this going to go? And I want to look at it from multiple perspectives and multiple models. So we're going to use Arima's. And what we're looking at, we're going to end up with something like this right here. So to begin with, let's go and take and get the libraries. Quant Mod, T-Series, Time Series, Forecast, and XTS. Those are the five mod, or, uh, five libraries we're going to bring in here. If you don't have one, use install.packages and then in quotation marks, you know, like times or whatever. Make sure you have the uh, uppercase, lowercase correct, you know, camel case, whatever it is. Otherwise, it will not find that library. Next, we want to do is we're going to use this get symbols. This pulls the data from Yahoo Finance. It pulls based on the stock ticker or trade symbol. In this case, it's PAK for Pakistan, the ETF. And then the date. So this is from 2014, the first day of 2014 to uh, Friday, which is 522 of 2020. Okay. Next, what you want to do once you've pulled it in, that might take a couple minutes, or not a couple minutes, but you know, it'll probably take 30 seconds, something like that, to pull it in. Um, next, you want to look at the class of it. The class is X. So that tells you right there it's going to have multiple columns. What that means is you know, columns based on different uh, trading prices of the day for each day. So we can tell you it'll be ooh, the first column's open, second column's high, third column's low, fourth column's the close for the day. The most important one for us in this period with or with forecasting is one of those. Right, because it can go up or down during the day and have a lot of variance, but we want to know what was the end day price, closing day price. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this PAK and then four comma four is the uh, for the fourth column to get the closing price. We're going to put that in PAK close prices just like this, and then we're going to look at that and we're going to plot it. So to plot this, what we first want to do is use this PAR MF row of C1 comma 1. What that does, it takes this right here where I've got four and it's going to make it so it's one big graph. I don't want to look at one little graph yet. So what I want to do is I want to run that and then what I want to do is this plot PAK closes, right? So if I run this, that will give me the PAK and its close prices for that entire time period of 1-1-2014 one, one, all the way till uh, 522 of 2020. Now these dates might look a little shorter than that, but that's the actual, you know, uh, that we're looking at. So if you look at that, you can see it's down here at around $23.50, which is what I told you it's trading for right now. Now we want to say, is it going to go up or down based on that? And for what time periods and stuff? So let's go next to the, uh, we're going to get the ACF and PACF. And the reason why we want to look at those is we want to look at where the lags are, which determine our models. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this same thing we used before, the PAR MF row of C1 comma 2, right? So that we're going to have two graphs on here. And they're going to be for the ACF and PCF. So that's what these functions are of the PAK closed prices. And then the main, all that does is give us a title. This nice so it's for the ACF and PACF. So let's run this together. And when we run that, we get this. So what that does, it tells me immediately I've got a lag right here at the one position and then it's carried throughout. Okay, so what that tells me right there is you're going to use, um, in a second here, the REMAs, and uh, you, that tells you your P or Q value. So the difference is if you want to be more accurate, so it's PDQ. So what we'll do is we want to look at this, and we want to print the ADF test on it, right, of this. So let's do that, and that's the augmented Dickey Fuller test, okay, and that's going to give your P value, right? So in this case, it's 0 0.726. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to pull the auto REMA on that based on that. So let's do that. 
and that gives us a zero, one, zero with drift, right? And then we got ASC and BIC values. The lower they are, the better off you are. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at, we're going to create four models based on this, right? Fit A is our autorema, which we just did. Autorema is the auto-suggested most optimal fit. It's not always the case, and we're going to do some custom models too. So we've got fit A equals autorema, pack close prices, seasonal equals false, and then you've got your title in there. Let's move this over a little bit here so you can see it better. And uh, so then we also use TS display. So the TS display function puts the residuals from it and the lag max of 40 and the main of 0, 1, 0. So let's do that. <clears throat> and there you go. There's your residuals. And what's most important here is your ACF, PACF is to look at the lags. From this, because I can see a lag clearly at 13 on both these, right? So what that means is I next want to do a custom arena built off that 01, but instead of 010, I want 0113. So I'm including for that lag. So let's do that same thing here, and we're going to do that one here, okay? And it's going to think for a minute, and there it is. Now see now how the 13 has gone now, and everything is within there. It hits the lines here twice. Same here and almost here, but it's all within the uh, lines here, which is what we want to do um, for higher accuracy. So next, let's go here to uh, fit C. So we're going to take that and have a difference of two. What if we want to, because it's touching the lines here, if I want to make it a little bit more accurate, I'm going to use differencing of two on it. So that's what this fit C equals ARIMA, pack close price order equals 1, 2, 13. And then I just tell you what it is here. We'll run that. Give it a minute here. It's thinking. And it'll pop up here in just a second. Do, 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 do. Give it a minute here. It's running. Still running. If a difference of two, what it does, it's going to be twice as long, maybe a little bit longer than that there is. And that shows you, okay, so now none of them are touching here and none of them are just a little bit more accurate. It's going to be, potentially. Next, we do a fit D. For fit D, I'm just doing one comma one comma one, and that's because that is the de facto uh, default standard for a lot of business applications, tools, and software, is that it's built in with a one, one, one ARIMA model in it. So let's do that. So we're four of them together. See, I just got the 13 right there again, so it's pretty close to the auto ARIMA. Next, what we want to do is we want to put all four of them for a certain time period, right? So I've got this these models, but what time period do I want? In this case, I'm going to start off with 100 days. So I'm going to put 100 into the uh, variable term. I'm going to split the screen so it's got four on it instead of just two. So I'm going to use PAR MF row of two comma two. See it right here. And then what I'll do is I'm going to take these forecasts of fit A, H equals term, fit B, H equals term, fit C, H equals term, and put into F cast one, F cast two, F cast three, and F cast four. And then at the bottom, I'm just going to use plot F cast four. So if I take this whole thing and run this together, what I'll get is this, which is really cool. Now that's for 100 days. So what this is telling me is there's four models. Let's see what we got here. We got two down and one sideways. So it's basically saying these two are basically strong cell signals there, and these two are saying hold, right? They're not saying buy. It's not saying it's going up. It's just saying they're staying straight. That's for 100 days. Now, what if we want and looked at, well, first, before we go into the other day periods, let's do the accuracy. So if I do accuracy of each of these FCAS, FCAS 1, FCAS 2, FCAS 3, FCAS 4, let's take this this way. Oh, hold on here. Let's take this. There we go. That way. And we run this accuracy function. And what it'll do is that gives us our mate. This is the main one you want to look at right here. And what that is, you take one. Or you subtract that from 100. So what do you get? When you subtract that from 100, you have 98.9633, 98.96117, 96117, and 96095. What that means is that your accuracy is going to be highest, actually. In this case, they're very close to each other. But in this case, the autorem is the most accurate by a very small. Okay, that's what it's telling you right there. Now, but they're all, you're at 98.96, basically 99% accuracy. So next, let's look at the plot of your models. What if we already looked at it? What was the date period of 100 days, right? So what if we took it to half that? What about 50 days? So we know we're, it's mixed on 100 days. Let's see what the 50 days, same thing. Plot at the end of F, you know, of all these, right? So we've got plot, FCAST1, FCAST2, FCAST3, FCAST4, right? 
and then we've got term of 50, right? So if we do that, what do we get? We get this. Let's bring it back out again, take a look at it a little bit bigger. One, two are down, and two are kind of across, but they kind of have like a slight uptick to it, which is what I'm seeing right there. Let's see if we can make it a little bit bigger. And bring this a little bit, maybe. And, well, it's kind of sideways. I would still say it's sideways. I like two strong selling and two that are saying hold, basically. That's what it's saying there for 50 days. So you got the same 50 days going into uh, 100 days. Now, what if we did it for 200 days, right? Let's go and look 200 out. And we're doing the same thing. Remember, FCAST1, we're putting forecast of fit A for H equals term. It's easier than having to write in here H equals 200, H equals 200, H equals, and having to change it every time. So I'm just using it based off of a uh, variable of term. So if I run that for 200 days, what's that going to do? Okay, it gives you a bigger, much easier to read uh, graph because it's for 200 days, and it's doing the same thing, it looks like. The upticks, they're just sideways, and these two are definite cells. So you got between a cell and a hold for those based off those arena models. Now, let's go a little further. What if we wanted to know, okay, what is our target price at the end of that time period? So we could say, what is our target price at the end of 50, at the end of 100? It doesn't matter. I'm going to look at it at the target price of this. What's the target price going to be then? this? Well, obviously, looking at this, you're probably looking at 16, 17 bucks. But let's just take a look at that because it's 23.50 we know was right here at the end, which is what the beginning of our forecast begins at. And so it depends on what the end is. So according to this, if we take fit A, fit A is our auto email, which we determined in this case was the most accurate, which is this one going downward. And if we want to look at this, we take forecast fit A of H equals 200. That's your time period. You hit control and enter. It's going to go through this and show you all the points. But at the end, you're basically looking at 17.49313, about 17.5. Target is in 200 days, according to the auto remas is about $17.50. So if you were to look back, look at it now, now would not be the time to buy it. So $23.50, you'd want to go and wait a little bit until it gets down to about $17.50, $17.80 and buy it then. But again, this is not financial advice. It's not meant to be financial advice. This is just for you to see and have fun with some financial forecasting, bring in some data from some other areas of the world that are interesting. In this case, PAK or Pakistan and their ETF, a well-diversified ETF from the Pakistan uh, stock index. So um, that's basically what it is of how to do this. We've shown you how to plot all the different pieces and some pretty interesting data to use. Again, down below, there's a link if you decide you want to go and try your, your uh, abilities at uh, finance and investing uh, to Robinhood. You get a free stock if you go and click on that. Uh, thanks again for watching. I hope you found this or, uh, interesting and uh, informational. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks.